What's up, everybody? Today is October 11th, 2024. I am once again having McDonald's on my day off. Today is my day one of my days off. I worked five 12s in a row. You know, I'm going to tell you, I have so much to complain about, but <laughs> I know a lot of you guys don't want to hear it. I just, I just, I, I hate work so much. I mean, I don't know if anybody wants to hear it or you guys just want me to just eat my food and just talk about something else. I don't know. I mean, I just, I just, I hate to work. I hate work. I'm not particularly thrilled about my job. I just stay there because it's a job and, you know, it's money. So I'm eating something different today. I normally, or I have been getting um, sausage biscuits. But these are on sale as well. These are uh, sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffins. So, something different. But, I mean, I kind of only want to complain about work. Because, for one, what does it do? What does it do? And, um, you know, what does it do? It doesn't do any good. But anyhow, it just it just sucks. Work sucks, especially as far as my job, because my job is twelve hours. Twelve hours is just too long. Twelve hour shifts are just too long. You know, I gotta wake up at five o'clock in the morning to be there at six, and it's just too long. And then the way that my job is structured, our days off are not the same days off. So it's not like every week, say I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, for example. It jumps around. It actually switches one day. So for example, this week, my, my normal schedule this week was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 12-hour shifts. That's my normal schedule. But... <laughs> They required me to come in on Sunday. So actually my week was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Five days. Anyhow, it's not like, okay, well next week it's going to, I'm also going to do the same, say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. No. So next week my schedule is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it, it goes ahead another day. So it's always skipping ahead another day. And so the following week, it'll be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then, like I said, whatever required days. So anyhow, that adds a little bit of a, or a lot, of annoyance and inconvenience. Because, you know, your days off are always jumping around. And it just makes it harder to plan for doing stuff and whatever. And then, of course, the required days. That doesn't help either. Just randomly, they require you. That actually, okay, so... I work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, five twelves. Then they also require me on Saturday, so tomorrow. But I already called it in, and you're like, "Well, Matt, that's dumb. You're not going to get money." Hold on. Remember, I'm a union employee, so um, we accrue uh, paid time off and sick leave and all that kind of stuff. And so I had, I actually have nine hours saved up of sick time. And so I'm going to use that for the day that I called in. So I am going to get paid. <laughs> I'm getting paid to not work. That's the real winning right there. So yeah, I am going to get paid for Saturday day. <laughs> yeah. So anyways... Yeah, twelve hours is too long. I just it fills my body, my feet hurt, my ankles hurt. Just whatever. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it too much because it's because uh, it's just depressing. But anyhow, we'll talk about less depressing stuff. So I got four of these sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffins, and of course a Red Bull. It's my day off. You know, I walk so much 
during the week. Because I walk, I walk to work because my car is messed up. And then I get to work and I got to walk more because I'm a janitor and our factory is huge. And so I got to go from plant to plant, you know, cleaning up. So I walk a lot, a lot. Um, and so my feet are exhausted and obviously I burn a lot of calories. So I try to make up for it when I can and, you know, you know, keep my body, get protein and, you know, calories and stuff. I got food stuck in my teeth that's bothering, bothering me. Um, so anyway, so it's my day off today and yeah, I'm just like, my body's just exhausted. I'm very exhausted. There's a lot going on in the news. I was going to talk about that a little bit too. This will just be a general video about everything. <laughs> um, and here in the United States, we have a presidential election coming up, which I've, I've talked about several times, and it's getting close. Um, it's next month in November. So I don't know what date it is exactly, November 5th or whatever it is, but so about less than a month now, less than a month away. We're going to find out who's going to be the next president. Either going to be Trump or Kamala Harris. Joe Biden is not going to be president anymore. He decided not to run for president again. So that's going on in politics. I've already made my predictions about that. and I'm not, I haven't changed my prediction on that. For those of you who don't know, I'm predicting that Kamala Harris is going to win. In short. Um, also over here on this side of the planet, in Mexico... They're getting their first female president. I believe she's already um, the incumbent. So she's just waiting to be sworn in whenever they swear in their president. I think maybe January 1st or something like that. So yeah. So the, oh yeah, yeah that was gonna be, that's going to be kind of interesting to me. That's kind of interesting to me. Kind of interesting to me. So Mexico is getting its first female president. And I believe that... We here in the United States are going to get our first female president with Kamala Harris. Whether that's true or not, we'll find out. But let's just say it's true. So, Mexico, United States, will both have a female president. It's like all we need is for Canada to get a female uh, prime minister. And it'll be a trifecta in North America. North America will be uh, run, so to speak, uh, by, by women. It'll be, uh, you know, the heads of state will be all women. That'd be interesting for the first time in history, huh? First female president in Mexico, first female president in the United States, and perhaps the first female prime minister in Canada. I don't know that answer. So that would be interesting. Not saying that that's close to happening. I don't know anything about Canada's um, elections. So anyhow, so that's going on in politics. What else in U.S. news, big hurricanes. I think on the on the East Coast in the United States, Florida, and was it North Carolina? I thought was getting some, you know. So hopefully, um, you know, wish the best for everybody over there. If you happen to know anybody over there, I hope hope your family or people are okay. That's really bad, you know. People's houses getting swished away and stuff like that. So that's going on. In technology news, Elon Musk, the head of uh, Tesla, you know, he's trying to come out with robots. He did like a press conference yesterday and he debuted, um, well not debuted, but he talked more about, I think, his uh, Optimus robots. And... Um, He's trying to get self-driving taxi going. And regardless if if Elon if Elon Musk achieves it or not, you know, someone's gonna develop a humanoid robot. You know, a robot that looks like a human, that walks, has arms, hands, etc. Someone's gonna some company is gonna develop that that can do general purpose stuff. You know, cleaning, cooking, working in a factory like uh, where I work and you know.
It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of when, really, or which company is first going to do it. Is it going to be him? Who? I was actually going to talk about that before, too. I was going to make a video um, talking about could a robot do my job? Me, specifically me. I guess I could talk about that a little bit since this is a video about everything, right? We're on sandwich number three, in case you're curious. Um, so I'm a janitor. So I work. So so my 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 job is Lamb Weston, which is a potato slash French fry processing facility, whatever you want to call it. But I'm a janitor. I used to work in the factory and dealing with the potatoes and all that. But I got out of that, and uh, you know, I moved up, so to speak. Not really up, but sideways, <laughs> I guess. And so I'm a janitor. So I clean. And so, yeah, I've thought before, you know, I mean, with everything becoming automated, you know, um, or a lot of things becoming automated. I thought to myself, eh, you know, is a robot ever going to do my job? You know, am I ever going to be, is my position ever going to be replaced, um, you know, by a, a robot, a machine, whatever? So first to note, just speaking of my job in general, um, there's people at my job who've been there a really long time, 20, 30, 40 years, literally. And um, several of them, you know, told me that years back, decades back, it used to be more employees, which, you know, is believable and, you know, I don't I don't uh, doubt it or whatever. Anyhow, so it used to be like maybe two or three or maybe even four times more employees than there is now. More. Just say double the employees. Say, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, there was twice as many employees that there is now. Okay? There was more employees back then, say, 90s or 80s, whatever. And there was less machines, you know, because technology wasn't as advanced, you know. Like one machine I know in particular was a machine at my work called a palletizer. And, um, it just stacks pallets. That's what it does. All day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, stacks pallets. So the boxes of french fries come on the conveyor belt. And um, there's like this robot arm, I want to say, but it has like su suction cups. It doesn't have like hands like a human. It has like suction cups. And it'll grab, I think, like four boxes at a time. And it'll start stacking a pallet. And then once this, the pallet is stacked, it puts saran wrap around it. And... Um, you know, 20, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, humans used to do that. I've done it at other jobs, stacking pallets and wrapping them with saran wrap and stuff like that. Anyhow, so they have a machine now that does it called palletizer. So that's just one example. And so there, we don't have humans at my job stacking pallets anymore. Nobody does it. The palletizer does it. <laughs> I think there's one guy who kind of oversees the palletizer. So instead of like, I don't know, say 20 employees stacking pallets. There's just one employee basically watching the machine. So, yeah, so there is less employees. Like I said, uh, decades ago, more employees, less machines. Uh, now, uh, less employees, more machines. Right? Okay. So, we extrapolate that into the future. And um, you can reason that, say, 20, 30 years into the, the future from now, there's going to be even less employees and more machines. Maybe half the population. Say 20 years from now, be half the amount of people that there are now, right? And that's not too far fetched. I mean, that's just, that's the way things are going. You know, all these companies are trying to replace guys and girls like me and you, um, you know, and, and get a machine to do the job because, you know, like I said, well, like with the palletizer, it's one machine that runs 24 7. Just have to have one one person fix it, whatever. Palletizer doesn't get days off or holidays or anything like that. It just goes, you know. Don't have to worry about it getting injured or or dying or, you know, if something happens to it, just fix it, whatever. Anyhow. So that's the trend. Well, the question is, is there going to be a machine to replace my position, janitor? And I've looked at I've looked it up before, and surprisingly, there already is a janitor robot that exists. 
I've seen it. I've seen it with my eyes <laughs> on video. So it was in a hospital, and um, it's not a humanoid robot. It's like a little, a little car driving, and I think it has some kind of arms. Um, but it was in a hospital, and it's able to take the elevator because hospitals are like several floors. So it's smart enough to be able to, like, press the elevator button, go into the elevator, go into different floors, you know, to clean other bathrooms. And then when it gets to the bathroom, it can open the door, it drives its little car into the bathroom, and it then uses its arm to, like, like grab the brush, and then, like, you know, brush, brush inside the toilet, and they'll spray. And There's a machine that does it. I've seen it. I don't remember what it's called, but if you look up Robot Janitor, you might be able to find it. So anyhow, the technology exists already. Um, but I was thinking about the hospital um, versus my job. It's different structurally, which would make it harder. So like, like for example, my job is not, I'm going to tell you right now, my job is not uh, wheelchair friendly at all, at all. If you were a person in a wheelchair and you wanted to come work at my job, it'd be really hard to get around, to get inside um, some of the gates. A lot of stuff. Which is weird because usually here in the United States, there's laws that like mandate, hey, you have to have wheelchair access. And my job does not bad. Right? Anyhow, the point of that is, you know, a wheelchair is something on wheels. And so this, this janitor robot on wheels would be hard navigating around my work because it isn't just one plant. You know, several plants that it would have to go to. There's stairs and there's security gates to go through. Then you know, just like I said, a lot of stuff that's not wheelchair friendly and wouldn't be robot on wheels friendly either. So I was just thinking about all this. Like the practicality of it, like how it work, and I was like, okay, well, they would essentially have to get one robot, instead of having one robot do all the plants, they would have to get one robot per plant. We have, officially we have three plants, and then there's another part called raw receiving. So I, I say there's four plants. So basically they would have to get four robots and put one in each plant. Um, but even that, because we have other little buildings and offices that have bathrooms too that are outside the plant. So, but just say, but anyhow, so I was, I, you know, just thinking about this, just hypothetically, I was like, okay, they would have to get four individual of those robots and it would just stay in the plant all the time and just clean the bathrooms, you know. But even within the plant, like in, in our plant one, again, it's not wheelchair friendly at all, which is, as a side note, it's so dumb. It's like, what if someone in a wheelchair wanted to come work at my job? My job would be scrambling to, um, you know, uh, put it up to code. Because like I said, here in the United States, I don't know, because we're in Washington. I don't know if Washington's different than California. But in general, in the United States, you have if your building, you know, serves the public or even for employees, it has to be, like, handicap accessible for wheelchairs and stuff like that. My job, not accessible. So anyhow, so again, but so for a wheeled robot, yeah, they're even within the plant... Sometimes it'd have to go upstairs. And like in our plant one, there's stairs going from like um, the break room to the bathroom. Because that's part of my job too. I don't just clean the bathrooms. I clean the break room. And so, yeah, so it'd be weird. And then the robot's kind of wide. Our, our hallways are not that wide. It just, for now, that that machine would not seem practical is kind of what I'm getting at. So basically for now, what I'm getting at is I think my job is pretty safe as far as that goes. And plus... Besides all that, even if, even if uh, my job or whatever job was like accessible for you know a wheeled machine or handicap friendly as it should be, <laughs> I'm very disappointed in my job for not being wheelchair friendly. You know. Anyhow, um, there's other problems with the robot too. That um, like okay, it can go in there and it can spray chemicals and it can clean. But sometimes I go in there, and what was the toilet's clogged? Can it? Can the? Can that robot unclog a toilet? Um. What about cleaning the sinks? And I, well, I think it, or it does mop the floor. 
I think I did see it mopping the floor. That same robot. So it can do that. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just trying to make excuses. Like, no, the robot can't do my job. Basically, they would have to make some adjustments. But, yeah, even right now, they probably could. If if um, if my company or another company wanted to invest um, money to do that, tell the robot company, hey, you know, we need to, to do this and that, the robot company probably could just make some adjustments to figure it out. It's probably not that complicated. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking that the robot can't take my job. But now... If they had a humanoid robot, like something like the Tesla bot, that could walk around, then so it could go upstairs and stuff like that. And then it also had, like, you know, knowledge about cleaning a toilet, maybe even unclogging a toilet. Then it could take my job. My job is pretty simplistic. You know, clean the bathroom, you know, sweep and mop the, the break room, wipe the tables, you know, um... Mop the hallways, stuff like that. Pretty, pretty simple. When you start to think about it, you're like, wow, you know, one of the first jobs to go is going to be janitors, probably. Yeah. You know? Um. So yeah, there goes my job. There goes my position. But I was thinking now. Oh, this is what I was also thinking. This was this was even more interesting to me. But now say you had a good company, like, you know, a company that cared about their employees and was like, let's just say, you know, maybe robots that existed that could kind of do that, could kind of clean up and do that, like a humanoid robot that could walk around. But say you had a good company that was like, hey, you know, we respect our employees. We don't want to get rid of all our human employees. We want to keep them. And, you know, we care about them having a job, etc. right? What you could do, what would help me, is if they brought in a robot for a helper. That would be nice. Again, like a humanoid robot. That could kind of that kind of understood general tasks, and they could kind of you know say while I'm cleaning the tables, it could be sweeping, or a big big thing. One of the things that I hate to do is stocking, um, you know, like toilet paper, chemicals. So I have a little janitor room, but it, it's it's small, and so I could only hold so much like paper towels, toilet paper, stuff like that. And so we have other areas that, you know, are more stocked with toilet paper, stuff like that. So when I run out, basically, I got to walk over uh, to the other areas to go get, you know, my stock of toilet paper and stuff. So anyhow, like a robot helper would be perfect for that. God, I would love that so much. Uh, if I could tell the robot, hey, uh, you know, go get me a box of uh, paper towels. And, you know, because like I said, you know, I get tired. I got to walk here. I got to walk there. So I tell the robot, hey, go get me a box of paper towels. And so it walks over to the... Uh, chemical room or we have we have a couple of areas that's like has stock of stuff so yeah the robot walks over there he grabs a box or two of you know paper towels or toilet paper and brings it back to me then i just have to stock it in the room that would be nice yeah that would be nice <laughs> yeah so hopefully the, the the first iterations will just uh, these robots will be helpers before they completely take our jobs but yeah that would just that alone that would save me so much time and energy and, and and wear and tear on my feet and my ankles. And that would be so nice. Just just having it stock the, the janitor rooms. Go hey, go fetch the stuff, robot, and, you know. And even have them stock it. If you could stock it. If you could, you know, put the box on top of each other and oh hey, this goes here, this goes here. Man, that'd make my job so much easier. <laughs> well, yeah. But yeah. Companies aren't working on it. Tesla is definitely not the only company working on, um, you know, humanoid robots or self-driving cars and whatever other what what uh what, how was I gonna say that? what other machines, you know, could do other things driving. Um, I've even seen like um, robot like uh, forklifts. I think that exists. You know, um, tractors, all kinds of stuff. The machines are coming. <laughs> Bro, are they going to take the janitor job? That's the question. They will. They will. My job is pretty, um, you know, it's not like high level, uh, you know, not like a mechanic or something where you got to figure stuff out. It's pretty, pretty simple, you know. I mean, like I said, they already have a machine that does it. Spray the chemical, wipe the toilet, 
spray the floor, wipe the floor. They have a machine that does it currently. I just have to improve it a little bit, you know. I'm officially full. I've eaten four of these things and I'm full. I still have my drink. <clears throat> this video's been going on for 25 minutes. Oh, I gotta end this pretty soon. Mm, I'm most full. Well, it's my day off today. I have my little breakfast, my little drink. You know, this really helps, I tell you what. When you got to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to, to be to work at 6 for 12 hours. You know, I've tried to do, I've tried to do like no caffeine and working long hours and late, especially late hours. Body starts to shut down. Your, your brain is like, I'm tired. I need to sleep. <laughs> yeah, trying to do um, really long hours without caffeine. No good. Pretty much everyone at my work either drinks coffee or tea or, or a, a, an assortment of energy drinks, either Red Bull, Monster. Um, some people like the Celsius one. Yeah. So, I'm going to end this video on a little um, fun, not fun fact, but something that happened yesterday at my job. So, I don't know, a month or two ago, I posted a video of my friend Jesus arm wrestling another guy. His name is um, Rolando. And uh, Rolando beat Jesus in arm wrestling. And uh, yesterday at work, Rolando, he was trying to arm wrestle because Rolando, he's, he's a strong guy. He works out. He's, he's big. He's not very tall, but he's really strong. Anyhow, he was trying to arm wrestle another guy who's kind of strong too. The other guy didn't want to. And I was like, hey, I'll arm wrestle you. Like, I knew I was going to, I knew I was going to lose, but just like for fun, right? Since he wanted to arm wrestle somebody and man, he's too strong. I couldn't, I couldn't budge him whatsoever. <laughs> I, I lost atrociously. So I didn't record it, but as well, I, I, um, I arm wrestled the, the guy that you saw in the video beat my friend Jesus. He beat me as well. No need for video footage of it. It happened. Actually, he beat me a couple of times. He's like, okay, hey, try again. Okay, try again. And then I even had him. I was like, okay, well, don't try to beat me. Just kind of like hold your arm like center and I can see if I can budge your arm. Nothing. <laughs> so I'm not that strong, at least compared to him. My friend Jesus beat me too in arm wrestling for what it's worth. I'm just not that strong. Ow. I just pulled my hair. I just pulled my, uh, huh. did you guys see that? That did not feel good. Wow. Wow. Thanks, Red Bull, for attacking me. <laughs> okay. It's been, oh, 28 minutes. This is one of my longest videos in a while. Thank you for watching, especially if there's anyone here who's watched to the end. Thank you so much for sticking around for the whole, basically 30 minutes. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you guys next video.